Welcome to St. Luke's United Methodist Church. I would like to take a few minutes to share some information with you about St. Luke's history and the beautiful Tiffany windows. The first proof of St. Luke's existence was in the Illinois Conference Minutes of November 1833. Barton Ramble preached the first session on Iowa soil on November 6, 1833. After having outgrown two church buildings, the existing building plans were started for this building. In 1895, the construction of this church began and it was finished in 1897. Many of the Tiffany windows were put in in 1896 and the pipe organ was installed in 1897. The cost to build this church was around $100,000. It probably would cost a little more than that today. The outside walls are made of 32 inch blocks of limestone that were shipped here from Indiana because their limestone was better quality than what we had in Dubuque. When the doors were opened for the first service in 1897, it was debt free. Dubuque was a wealthy area at that time and the construction was paid for as it was completed. As you look around this beautiful sanctuary, all of the windows you see in here are Tiffany windows with the exception of one window. This window is located in the back of the sanctuary, the second window from the door. As you will notice, this window looks much different than the Tiffany Prodigal Sun window next to it. You will also notice that the non-Tiffany window has much larger and brighter colored pieces. Tiffany windows colors are more subdued and the pieces are much smaller for more detail. The colors are painted on the glass in the non-Tiffany window, whereas the colors in the Tiffany windows are infused in the glass. Many colors can be found in each individual piece of glass. Louis Comfort Tiffany created his own formula for his glass, which was called for real glass, meaning homemade. And to this day, his formula is still unknown. These windows were created in New York and shipped by rail cars all the way to Dubuque. The windows were installed by Mr. Tiffany's workers and Mr. Tiffany never came to view them once they were installed. Many have tried to copy his technique but have not been able to do so. Tiffany windows have a 3D effect to them which is created by the layering of the glass. Some pieces extend out further than other pieces while others remain one dimensional in the background. There is also a considerable amount of texture built into many of the pieces. You will notice creases and bulges and dips and ridges, etc. in many of the pieces. The only colors that are actually painted on Tiffany windows are in the human features. And as you can see, they are very natural and precise. The windows on the inner wall of the sanctuary are much simpler in design but still you can see the colors are infused in the glass. These windows are actually set in sliding doors. Two panels will go into the wall on the right and the other two panels to the left. When this church building was built, everything on the other side of the wall of heavy thick doors was open seating. St. Luke's was built to seat 1,000 people. We don't have that large of a congregation anymore so the open area has been transformed into offices and classrooms. The upper panels of the windows on these doors each contain a symbol. The end symbols represent the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet with the alpha and omega symbols and start for the beginning and the end. The lamp and the open book represent the Bible. The origin of the four evangelists is based on a verse from the book of Revelations. Matthew's symbol is the winged man, since this gospel begins with the family history of Jesus. Mark is represented by a winged lion, the symbol of courage. A winged ox stands for Luke and is a symbol of service and sacrifice. The eagle, a symbol of vision and mysticism, is a sign of John. If you look up at the balcony area, you will notice our largest window, the window of Job. This window is 18 feet by 15 feet, and the man featured in this window depicts the unknown author of the book of Job. This window has special lighting on it, so in the middle of the window is highlighted at night in its brilliant colors. 
As you turn your attention to the altar area, you will notice that the altar is extremely ornate for the Methodist Church. When this building was being designed, there was a lot of Episcopalian influence in this area. The pipe organ we use today is the original organ that was installed in 1897. This was considered as a musical marvel at that time and was one of the largest organs in the West. It was shipped on two rail cars from the manufacturers Ferret Vody in Detroit, Michigan. The council of the original organ was replaced due to damage from a small fire in the sanctuary several years ago. Not many people can play this type of organ any longer, but we are blessed to have four people who beautifully play this instrument. We continue to keep the pipes and the keyboard well maintained by the Fowler Organ Company out of Lansing, Michigan. Brian Fowler has stated that to replace this fine instrument would cost over one and a half million dollars. The ivory colored frieze you see extending across the entire chancel and choir loft was given to St. Luke's anonymously in the early 1900s. This replica is of the famous singing children that hangs in the Cathedral of Florence in Italy. These panels are of children singing and dancing and playing musical instruments. Definitely not something serious by any means, but still a beautiful piece of art. The beautiful angel window over the altar area was given to St. Luke's by the Richardson family in memory of their daughter Harriet who died in a tragic accident as a teenager. This window is a beautiful window that can hold your attention for a long time. If you have to sit and admire the window on a bright sunny day with clouds drifting throughout the sky, you will notice the colors will change. It is said that the face of this angel is said to have a strong likeness to Harriet, which is remarkable because no picture or description of Harriet was given to Mr. Tiffany. As you look at the large windows on the outside wall facing the north, you will notice the many colors, the depth, and the overall beauty of these windows. The three middle windows were installed in 1896, the two end ones in 1916, and the last window in the choir loft was added to our collection in 1932. As you view these windows, you will notice that the last window was taken, has taken on different colors, more pastel colors, and the pieces are not as small or intricate but there's still a lot of incredible amount of detail in this window. Mr. Tiffany actually signed this window in 1927 before closing his plant in 1928. Lewis passed away in 1933. Many of his works have been destroyed, but those that remain all around the world are treasures. You will notice by looking closely at these large windows that they are truly magnificent and as you can imagine, they are priceless. Many have asked if they are insured or protected from vandalism. The answer to both questions is yes. They are only insured for what it would cost to replace them with regular stained glass windows as Tiffany windows are no longer being made. The windows do have a clear panel on the outside that does protect them from vandalism and regulates temperatures in the windows. In 1999 to 2002, the five middle windows were removed and shipped to Bovard Studios in Fairfield, Iowa. These windows were taken apart layer by layer. There are anywhere from three to seven layers in each one of these windows. Once they were cleaned, which meant removing coal and dirt that had accumulated over the 100 years, the windows definitely were brighter. Once the, that was finished, the windows were completely dismantled piece by piece to re-lead the windows. The leading is the outside outline around each piece. As you look closely at the windows, you will notice that each small leaf and each grape in the grape bunches are separate pieces. So dismantling these windows was quite an undertaking. Once the windows were cleaned and re-leaded, they were reinstalled at St. Luke's with the average cost being $40,000 a window. The good news is it doesn't have to be done for another 150 to 200 years. All of the windows have been re and cleaned in the sanctuary, 
but the remaining windows throughout the building are slowly being done as the funds become available. We have the fifth largest collection of Tiffany windows in the United States with 105 windows in total. Even the bathrooms have Tiffany windows. Most of them outside of the sanctuary are the simpler designs with 26 of them containing different symbols of the crucifixion. As you look up at the ceiling, you'll notice that it all wood ceiling and it was installed in the early 1900s. It is called quarter sawn wood, which means it was cut in a special way to not have any grain lines showing. It's very expensive and very wasteful of wood products. You probably won't see much of that again. The only variation you see are the slight differences in the color of the wood, so it all seems to blend together. Also notice that we have three Tiffany lamps in the sanctuary, two in the balcony and one in the choir loft. We hope you have enjoyed this information you have received on, a, on the history of St. Luke's as well as Mr. Tiffany and his beautiful windows. St. Luke's is a functioning church with weekly services on Sundays at 8.30 and 10.45, amen. Visitors are welcome to join the congregation for services and any special events. Please feel free to roam around the sanctuary and enjoy them for as long as you wish. Thank you for taking the time to st stop in and view our windows and hopefully take many memories with you.